comes off, Shard Beastin here, and today we are going to talk about bullies. Okay, so, first of all, the thing about bullies is it's about power, and so you need to kind of know that. Now, I'm not making any justifications, because if you watch some of my other vlogs, you know I don't like justifications. But, uh, people who get bullied sometimes end up as bullies, and there's reasons for why we do things. The reasons aren't you can't say they're good or bad reasons. You can't justify and say, well, the reason I'm mean to you is because I was, me, people were mean to me. The reason I'm mean to you is because I have no power. The reason, you can't say that. But you can say that I understand and take complete responsibility that the way I treated you was in part because of how I learned it from other people. That's not an excuse. That's just what I learned. And then I learned that it was wrong and moved on. Okay, so I was bullied. Um, well, I've been bullied most of my life. Even as an adult, people try to bully me. And the way people do that is I've had employers bully me. Adult people who hired me to work for them bully me to do what they want me to do, especially illegally. And um, so... It happens to us all. And when you're unable to understand what's happening to you, you get sucked into this negative zone. And then how, what comes out of you sometimes is that. That happens with abuse, abusive people because abusers are bullies. They abuse people because they have the ability to do so. Now, um, part of that reason, and people are going to go, ah! and get really upset here is because you let them okay you give them the power you might not mean to give them the power and as children we don't understand that and as as I got older in high school I started to realize that I was letting these people do this now you have to be careful because when you say no I don't want you to bully me anymore it can become more physical if it wasn't physical to begin with um, because that person who is bullying you truly believes they have the power to do so they don't understand that the reason they're able to bully you is because in some way you're letting them bully you um, and I know a lot of people are gonna be really really upset about that but that letting isn't a conscious thing it's not like you know you're letting them there are some people that are that way but um as children, we don't know that. We don't know that's, that we're giving away our power. Now, in my case, I was raised, I was in a household where there was a lot of abuse going on and a lot of mental health issues. So I didn't know that those interactions weren't normal or natural. I thought that's how everybody was. So when my friends were being that way, and I say friends because they're not really friends, but I didn't know that at the time. When those people that I was hanging out with, those peers that were my social group, started to be mean to me, I just thought it was me. I didn't know it was them. I didn't know that they had responsibility for the way they were treating me. Um, so it was really hard growing up for me to have much trust. Well, at first I thought that that's how it was for everybody. And then when I would talk to my grandmother about it, she'd say, no, it's... People shouldn't treat you that way. People should treat you a different way. And I sometimes thought it was because she was old and didn't know how people were. But I also thought, listening to my mom, who would say that I was taking it completely out of contents. Like, somehow this was my fault. Um, and, and when we talked about that letting people, it's different than being your fault. Like, somehow I wasn't the victim of this. Okay, even if you let somebody in to abuse you, you're still a victim. Okay, but when people say, oh, this is your fault, you're not being nice enough, or you're not, you're not understanding enough, or you're not, you must have done something to piss them off, that's victim blaming. That's where somebody's telling you it's your fault for breathing, you know. And so I believe my mom. I believe that somehow this was all my fault, and I just strive to be a better friend. To do better things. To be a nicer person. So people would like me and not be mean to me. That didn't work. It's sad to say. I mean it worked in some cases. But in other cases. And then I got to a point where I realized. That ding ding ding. The light goes off. And you realize that I 
wanted these people to like me so much that I let them treat me so badly. And I was probably about 14, 15 years old. And then I just kind of mentally said, no, I'm done with this. I'm not going to be, the, I don't, you're not going to do this to me no more. But the, the, what happened is then I started being that way to other people. And then I started noticing that I had been that way. So when I got picked on, I turned around and picked on somebody else. Because somehow that whole, well, I got no power. I gave it to you. So I got to steal that power back from somebody else. And that's kind of how bullying is. Because a person who bullies somebody else has lost power someplace else. Maybe from their parents. Maybe from the police. Maybe just because their life is so chaotic. So then they decide to take it out on all their peers because they're able to. Um. Some of the worst bullies I have ever met in my life are very charismatic people. People like them. They And it's hard to say, well, that guy's an ass to me or that girl is being a bitch. And they're like, no, they're so nice. And then it was always hard to get like your um, teachers or other people to listen, especially if they were charismatic. So if they were the, the captain of the football team or the head cheerleader or the A plus student, whatever, you know, that everyone liked. And they were being mean to you when you would go to the principal or you'd go to the teacher and you say this person is doing these things. They were like, you, them, you, them, who are we going to believe? Them. And so that becomes kind of a, a, a heartfelt thing. And I'm 52 years old, so that was 40 some odd years ago that people were still saying that. And they still say it today. I, um... I worked with uh, children in my past life, and sometimes teachers would say to me, well, you know, he's not very likable. Well, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if a person's likable or not. They don't deserve to be bullied, okay? No one deserves to be bullied. So what is the definition of bullyism, though, okay? So it used to be a bully was someone who picked on you to get your money or get you to do things. That's one type of bullying. Another type of bullying is to uh, torture people, okay, for control. So that everyone around you will say, oh, you're the big person. You're the great person. Everybody does what you say. Look, that person's going to buy you lunch. That person's going to do that. Um, in the adult world, bullyism looks a little different. Sometimes it's about be my friend and do things for me. You know, give me all your money. You buy me things. Take care of me. Um, or if you have employers that are bullies, sometimes it's, I want you to do these things that aren't legal. I want you to do this stuff for me. I want you to do, you know, abuse and bully tend to go hand in hand. Someone who abuses you is bullying you, okay? Um, the abuse sounds worse, so people use that instead of bullying because bullying still has a connotation like it's a kid thing. Like, only kids can be bullied. And at a certain age, they stop being bullied. In fact, society expects that by the time you're a preteen or teen, you should have a handle on this bullyism. Okay? But we are all different in that if we group people into, into categories, you have those who are those adventurous, bold kind of type, I'm not putting up with this kind of person, who very rarely get picked on. Most of the time, they tend to be the people that pick on other people. You have those strong, compassionate type kids. You have those slow to warm kids. Can't I'm like, I'm not sure I like you. They tend to be bullied. And then you have those shy, quiet type that kind of disappear and people don't even know they're around. They tend to get bullied a lot. Um, suicide in, in children has a very high connection to bullyism. And yet we still, even though there are national things out there, and I will put them up like I always do, uh, websites and stuff that talks about bullyism, training teachers about bullyism, all kinds of stuff, there's still bullying going on. It ha it's a weird thing to ask yourself, why? Why is bullying going on? Um, sometimes teachers are all like, oh, they just don't like him. Uh, okay, yeah, that I, I can see that. That's fine. But it's your job as the teacher to interact to help children who are behind. And behind can be anything in social. It could be social. It could be math. It could be mental health um, issues. It could be health issues. If you have a child that people are not inclined towards, 
they're probably being bullied. Or the other one teachers like to say is, well, he's not a very nice kid or she's not a very nice kid. So that's why people pick on her. Um, maybe she's not very nice because people pick on her. It's kind of that weird hamster wheel, you know, which chicken and the egg, what came first, the chicken or the egg? Did she get picked on first and then she became not very nice person or was she a not very nice person and then they picked on her and then that made her even more not very nice person? Um, I don't put up with bullies. I don't like them. Okay, flat out. Don't like bullies. You're a bully. I'm going to correct you. Now, I don't, I don't get mad at bullies. I think part of the problem for bullies is education. And that's not to say there aren't mean people in the world. I just don't believe that people are born mean. I don't believe we're born with this viciousness to do hurt upon others. We are taught to do that. I, I'm not saying we're not violent. I think we are born violent. But I don't think that our violence is indicative that it needs to be towards another person for no other reason than because it gives me power to rule over you. To be able to know that if I say to you, you don't do this, I'm going to kick your butt and you do it. Because you don't, you're afraid of getting your butt kicked, you know, and, um, so when we talk about bullyism and you, you know, your kid comes home and says, I hate my school, everybody hates me and they're all very mean to me. You should listen. You should listen. Uh, if you're a kid out there and you're like, I tell people, I tell people, I tell people, and all they say is I'm a snitch, they tell me I'm a baby, they tell me I'm crying, they're telling, it doesn't matter, keep telling, keep telling, keep telling. Talk to your counselor, talk to your teacher, talk to your principal, talk to whoever. If you have to, call the police chief, go down and sit down with a detective and say, look, this is what's happening to me and I can't make it stop. I, it should stop. It has to stop. Um... We, children should not have to live in a life where they feel fearful and and stressed out by people outside of their homes. I mean, it's worse when you have it in your homes, okay? And that needs to be reported as well. But there's just not enough help out there. And, and a lot of children don't want to tell because where else are you going to put? It's better to be someplace we already know how the environment is than to be stuck someplace that might be better but might be worse. Um, children who are bullied tend to be bullied in all aspects. You know, they go from one place to another place to another place hoping it's going to be better, and it's not. Sometimes it can be if they start out, you know, well. But if you're lacking the communication skills to begin with, then it doesn't help that from one place to the next place to the next place. Um, I used to lead groups on how to communicate and how to work out both with bullies and those of their victim. And one of the very first things I always said was, you have the power to wield it for good rather than for evil. And if you are wielding it for evil, you need to ask yourself why. What are you getting from this? And then look at all the things you could do and people would be so much happier with you. And then with the victims of bullying, what I would say is that we need to figure out why you feel the need to be liked by people who are being mean to you. And and I know the answer because I want to be popular. I want people to like me. I want to be have friends. And that's a very important thing. But sometimes if the people up here are being so viciously mean, do you really want to be viciously mean as well to others? Because that's what ended up happening to me. I ended up being accepted into a very vicious, toxic group. And then I ended up being vicious and toxic to other people. And then I was like, no, this is not me either. I don't want to be this way. If I'm going to be mean to anybody, it's going to be to the people that are toxic and vicious. But I didn't want to be mean to them either. So I just think that probably a lot of people have been bullied um, on YouTube. Because we have a lot of people on YouTube who suffer from mental health issues. And uh, YouTube is a good place to go to talk about, you know, being bullied. And how do we deal with it? There is a national um, thing for that. You can call any crisis line and talk to them about being bullied. And they will address it and, you, and help you with ways of being able to deal with it better. One of the, the most important things depending on your age, because the younger you are, the harder it is. It is hard to be by yourself, but 
learning to take value of who you are deep down inside is more important than being liked by other people because you will eventually find people who are like you, who like what you like. It, it may be far and few between and it may be one or two, but those one or two will be very strong friendships rather than 16 friendships that aren't as healthy. All right, so that's it. Um, if you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments and I'll answer them to the best of my knowledge. If we decide we need a bully part two, we can do that. But otherwise, that's, you know, I was bullied. I just want you to know that. I was bullied. It was one of the things that motivated me in working with kids was to, to stop the bullyism that goes around. And I've done a pretty good job. I've had kids come up to me and say, thank you for helping me out. It really, you know, it really taught me a lot. And then I've had a few that said it didn't get any better. And that sometimes happens. It just doesn't because it's hard to find the problem. Anyway, I went past my 15 minutes, but still under 20. We're working hard on that. So I talk really fast. A lot of information and there'll be all kinds of stuff up here for you and have a great weekend and i'm out of here catch y'all on the flip side peace